Hello and welcome back to the Station Discovery with me, Matthew Smith. I can't wait to share the following video uh, with you. Um, in this video, I'll be uh, going on a three-day adventure. First of all, starting with British Airways in the evening from London Heathrow, taking me into Budapest. From there, a coach journey into Moldova, into the capital Chisinau. And then from there, I'll be uh, going into Ukraine, into Odessa. That's why right, I'm going into Ukraine in the middle of the war zone. Um, I was there about a couple of years ago um, at, when it first started in Ukraine. It's not as intense as it was now. Um, so I will be uh, exploring Odessa for a bit. Unfortunately, I didn't take much videos or uh, photos for you guys at home. Uh, I had to be careful what I took pictures of, understandably. Uh, and I didn't want to upset or distress anyone. Uh, so um, I took some, but I couldn't take a lot. Uh, and then when I'm finishing in, in Odessa, I'll be fly uh, not fly, sorry, I'll fly into Ukraine at the moment. Uh, what was I thinking? I'm getting a coach uh, from Odessa um, into Poland, uh, going uh, up Ukraine and across to the Polish border. Uh, it's a 19-hour coach journey. Uh, in, however, it took incredibly longer than that. Uh, it's a five-hour wait we had to at the border. Five hours to get through into Poland, uh, the longest border crossing time I've had anyway. Um, and then when I get into Lublin, uh, you'll be uh, seeing my flight back to London Star Seven Wilder. Just about made it after the border delays. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoy this video. Um, at the, please do, if you don't want to watch all of it, um, that's absolutely fine. But please do stay t right till the end, or at least uh, if you want to skip it or whatever, uh, because I'll be mentioning some great charities um, where you can fund uh, support for Ukraine, uh, including Ukrainian children, uh, and uh, helping the um, adults with their uh, living and things like that. So please do stay till the end. If you can't, don't want to, at least skip it till after the um, after the costing bit, um, but at least uh, see how you can support Ukraine. Um, because um, I I very strongly support Ukraine. Um, you know, it's an illegal war at the end of the day, and they need your help. Uh, so please do stay to the end to see that. That's all I'm asking of you. Uh, however, without further ado, I do leave you with the video. You'll first be seeing some facts uh, about Chisinau and uh, Odessa, and you'll see some facts also about Lublin. Uh, I shall leave you with that, and I shall get back to you for your costing at the end. But like I say, please do stay till the very end if you can. Um, anyway, I'll leave you with that. Enjoy the facts. Now let's hear some facts. Chisinau is the capital of the Republic of Moldova in Eastern Europe and is surrounded by blocks of Soviet-style architecture including the neoclassical Nativity Cathedral. It is a fairly large city covering 47 square miles or 123 square kilometers. This makes it a little larger than Leicester, a city here in the UK. However, it is one and a half times more dense than Leicester with a population of 725,000 people. Many people decide for different reasons to settle in Chisinau from all over Eastern Europe. During the last census, a survey revealed 75% is Moldovan, but it's also home to Romanian, Ukrainian, Russian and Bulgarian. Chisinau is influenced by Russia and the Ottoman Empire. Its statues and historic buildings give reminders to the history of this fascinating city. Moldova relies on Chisinau for its economy. It brings 60% of the country's GDP. Chisinau is a selling point for Moldova. Each year Moldova welcomes 11,000 tourists and most head straight for the capital. However, that being said, Moldova is the least visited country in Europe. This is mainly due to its location and very few tourist attractions. Stefan Salmar Park is a must-see when visiting Chisinau. It is beautiful and popular year-round. It covers seven acres and remains the oldest park in Moldova. It is also referred to as the Park of Lovers, as it is a prime spot for romantic days out. 
Now on to Lublin. It is located in southeastern Poland near the Ukrainian and Belarusian borders. Lublin is the ninth largest city in Europe. It has a population of 336,000 people. Lublin has been the capital of Poland twice, albeit not very long, only for a few months. Both times it was associated with war, the first after the First World War and the second time at the end of World War II. Among the residents, 40% are young people up to 35 years of age. Lublin is one of the oldest cities in Poland, with its origins dating back to the 6th century. This means it has a rich past, which is evident with the historic buildings and landmarks. Lublin Castle is the major landmark in the city. It now hosts the Lublin Museum, showcasing the history and art of the city. Lublin Airport opened in 2012 and is the most modern airport in Poland. It received 84.2 million euros to help finance it. It was hoped that the airport would increase tourism in this part of Poland. In 2017, Lublin received the Europe Prize by the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe. Now on to Odessa. Odessa is a port city located in southern Ukraine along the Black Sea. It is known for its beaches and 19th century architecture. It is the third most populous city in Ukraine, with the Odessa region measuring 33,314 km squared. In comparison, it is larger than countries like Belgium, Montenegro and Cyprus. Even the largest lake of Ukraine is located here, called Yalpug. In the Odessa Archaeological Museum is stored the gold coins of Prince Vladimir. There are only 11 in the route. Seven are in Hermitage, one in the Russian State History Museum, one in the National Museum of Ukraine and the location of the other one is unknown. Nowadays, before recent events, Odessa is Ukraine's favourite holiday escape for culture, mild climate and beaches. A lot of its architecture from its golden age endures at palaces, parks, boulevards, ceremonial staircases and an opera house which is held as one of the finest in Europe. Now, as the majority, if not all of you watching will be aware, Ukraine is currently going through some difficulties and is under immense firepower from Russia and its illegal war. This has affected Ukraine's economy so much, and particularly because of the lack of tourists to places such as Odessa. Hopefully, once Ukraine wins the war and peace is restored, we will see Ukraine brighten up again and Odessa plus other cities across Ukraine will be a major tourist destination once again in Europe. Hello, and welcome to another video uh, and welcome to day one. I did, I'm going to be on an adventure today. I'm actually going on a flight here from London Heathrow with British Airways, going all the way to Bucharest in Romania, a coach from Romania into Moldova, uh, and then into Ukraine, uh, into Odessa. Have a bit of time to explore Odessa, um, and then a, a 19, 20 hour coach journey from Odessa into Poland, uh, into Lublin, where I fly back. Um, I'm going at Heathrow now. Um, it's actually, it's uh, rather different for me. So I'm flying with British Airways, uh, like I always do if I fly from Heathrow. Uh, and normally it's Terminal 5. Today, it's Terminal 3. Uh, some flights with British Airways do depart from Terminal 3, um, but f very rarely. Um, yeah, because some of is mainly Virgin Atlantic uh, and long haul flights. Um, let's see what this brings me. I shall join you after security, where I will explain more about my trip. Talk to me nice, talk to me honestly. Look in my eyes, don't let it fall on.
guys, so I'll pass through security very quick and easy actually. Um, time is half four, and my flight with Bruce Airways departs at quarter past six. So I've got about an hour and 45 here at Hoover to explore the place and um, see what I can have for my dinner tonight um, before my three hour plane ride over to Bucharest. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, as I was saying earlier, I'm going to be going, going to get to Bucharest for an hour before my coach uh, on to Chisinau, the capital of Moldova. I um, can't wait to share all this with you. Um, and I shall join you when I um, eventually get to Bucharest uh, on this epic journey. Um, yeah, and when I get to Ukraine, um, let's see what uh, that is like. But that's ages away yet. Let's enjoy what we've got now. I'll see you in Romania. We rewind. It feels so nice. I can My trip starts, hello from Romania. I'm uh, currently at Bucharest Otopeni Airport. I uh, just arrived about half an hour early, so I have plenty of time um, to get through passport and through the matter of minutes, no queues. Uh, I've got, it's currently local time, half 11 in the evening. I've got till half past midnight uh, until the coach. It's not very clear where you catch that, it departs on, mind you. Um, I followed the instructions on the ticket, so you're hoping it departs from here. Uh, I, I believe I'm probably the only one for this coach. Uh, it's not going to be that popular from the airport this time of night. Um, but yeah, so I'm currently here and my trip big guy begins. My next journey is to coach off uh, to, into Moldova. Um, yeah, it's about a eight or nine hour coach journey. Okay, obviously, later on we've got passport control to um, board the checks to go through to enter Moldova. Um, and then uh, I'll need to chase now at 20 past eight in the morning. Uh, and I shall join you later on, potentially on the coach or when I'm in Moldova. <laughs> Coming to you from Moldova. Um, currently in Chisinau North bus station. Um, got, it's currently 20 past 8 in the morning uh, and my bus departs at 9 am. So I've got about 40 minutes and we'll get something to eat, some breakfast, and what have you. Uh, and then I'll be getting a coach from here in Chisinau on a four hour coach journey uh, via the border crossing into Ukraine, uh, going to the city of Odessa. Um, and I shall get back to you uh, when I'm in Ukraine. See you then. Hello guys, so I've made it to Odessa, uh, currently in uh, Odessa, uh, southern part of Ukraine. It's raining, uh, typical for me to choose this day, um, but yeah, so I'm going to uh, have a look around. I've got a few hours here before my coach on towards Poland. So this is actually as far as I can get to the Black Sea, and they've cordoned the whole area off due to 
the risk of sea mines uh, and other explosive weapons. It was only in summer 2022, but it was all at the end of, yes, due to um, going into the sea. Um, it exploded, uh, so it was not so it kept in the sea, actually. Um, so I took a few videos on the top here, and that's as far as I can get. That ends my time here in Odessa. Um, you wouldn't think the war's going on because everyone's acting as normal. Uh, so now I'm going to get a coach from here in Odessa, 21 hour coach journey to Lublin in Poland. I can't wait to share this with you guys. Um, yeah, it's been an interesting experience here in Odessa. Not much time to explore. Uh, I wasn't planning to explore much time here anyway because I'll see what's going on and my safety and what have you. Uh, but yeah, so I'm now off to uh, Lublin, about half an hour, it's currently 4 o'clock in the afternoon, coach departs at half 4, so I've got about half an hour here before my coach departs uh, for Poland. I shall join you later on. Had a fast man, but it's ass plan. Fight for my life with the brass hands, and I still ball with a bad hand. Got an aerial point of view, but they'll never see the big picture through zoom lens. Kind of quicksand, make it push start. Type of band's cool, but the tent plan. I'm back on my bending rules for the kicks. They quit to give them two cents. Put my circle tight like we glued hands. Like I don't believe in new friends. Trail light, I know the ice then. I drop the song, get a few wins. I crave the comfort in my own skin. Really, I just want to feel the world spin. Go for your watch, we double that. I get it lit, I watch it bubble up. Remember. Hello guys uh, and welcome back. I'm currently back in London. I do apologise for the lack of footage uh, today. Uh, I've been very stressful actually. You know, we, even though we left Odessa on time back in Ukraine, um, but unfortunately uh, we got to the Polish border and it took five hours. Yep, you heard me right. Five whole hours to get there. That's right. Five hours to get to the uh, through the crossing at Poland. I nearly missed a flight. I considered having to put myself a hotel in Warsaw for the night and figure out what to do. It would have been an amazing footage for you guys, but unfortunately I was too, just too stressed uh, to deal with it all. Yeah, so it took five whole hours across the border uh, where the coach company only gave two and a half hours. I did get the flight in the end um, and I did arrive back into the UK uh, early. Uh, so all in all, it wasn't too bad, but it was just that you know, lack of flight and what, uh, lack of border crossing, uh, five hours and all that. So yeah, so I'm back in the UK now and I can't wait to see you on another video soon. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe and share my video for further.
uh, for further travel videos. See you soon. So, let's see how much this three-day adventure costed me. Let's start with transport costs, shall we? The British Airways flight from Heathrow Airport to Bucharest, booked through eDreams, costed £91.26, or in euros, €106.93. The coach from Bucharest to Chisinau costed me £18, or €21.10. The coach from Chisinau to Odessa came to a total of £20.42, or €23.93. The 20-hour coach journey from Odessa to Lublin came to £28.02, or €32.83. Finally, for our transport cost, the Ryanair flight from Lublin to Luton, but directly, was £60.07, or €70.38. So, for the transport part, the total for this came to £217.77, or €255.17. Moving swiftly on to day one costs, let's start with food and drink whilst in the UK, costing me £22.70 or €26.60. The British Airways in-flight Wi-Fi costed me £9.99 or €11.71. Food whilst on the British Airways flight came to £4.80 or €5.62. Food and drink whilst in Romania came to £4.10 or 23.88 Romanian Lu. That brings day one to a close with a total of £41.59 or 242.72 Romanian Lu. For day two, it's a very short list. Nevertheless, let's start with food and drink in Moldova, costing me £2.96 or 66 50 Moldovan Lu. And lastly, food and drink whilst in Odessa costed £7.17 or 341 Ukrainian Hifna. So this cheap day total came to £10.13 or 481 Ukrainian hyphna. On to our final day. So the food and drink on the way to Poland from Odessa came to £2.06 or 97.80 Ukrainian hyphna. The taxi from Lublin bus station to the airport was £7.12 or 36 10 Polish Slotty. Food and drink whilst at Lublin airport was £11.55 or 5850 Polish Slotty. Food and drink on the Ryanair flight to London was £7.40 or 3749 Polish Slotty. So, day three came to £28.13 or £142.51 Polish Slotty. So, now it's time for the grand total of these three long days. The total is £297.62 or €348.72. Yes, uh, I would class this as an expensive trip, uh, mainly because of the British Airways flight. But uh, other than that, it would have been much, much cheaper if the flight wasn't so expensive. Uh, so, yeah, it did cost, cost me a lot of money, but I enjoyed my time Uh on this trip and please do not forget to like subscribe and share my channel and click that notification button to stay up to date uh, with my latest videos please do continue to uh, stay after this as you'll be hearing about some lovely charities uh, if you want to support ukraine until next time happy traveling
So, let's be a bit more serious now. The war in Ukraine is harsh and it's affecting the lives of Ukrainian civilians who have been caught up in this illegal war that Russia has inflicted. As I was doing an episode on Ukraine, I thought I would share some ways for you to help the citizens of Ukraine. I'm going to be sharing two amazing charities with you. They are based in the UK, but anyone can donate from around the world. It is very important to say I have no affiliation whatsoever with the following charities and in no way are they supporting this section of the video or paying me to do so. This is happening because of me and only me and because they are amazing charities and are doing amazing work in this time of war in Ukraine. The first charity I want to introduce is the British Red Cross. Their Ukraine Red Crescent responders are providing first aid, psychological support, heating points, distributing hot food and drinks and setting up shelters for those who cannot return home. As temperatures drop below freezing, people desperately need warm shelter, clothes and support for heating costs. The conflict goes on and the British Red Cross continues to help Ukrainian citizens but cannot do this without donations from the public. To support them, please do visit their website at donate.redcross.org.uk forward slash appeal forward slash Ukraine dash crisis dash appeal. Once again, that is donate.redcross.org.uk dot uk forward slash appeal forward slash ukraine dash crisis dash appeal and it is also being shown on your screen please do think carefully about this and donate to them they are doing amazing work in ukraine at this time Secondly, another charity that needs your help is UNICEF. A generation of children in Ukraine have spent more than 600 days with violence, fear, loss and tragedy. UNICEF helps Ukrainian children. 4.1 million children are currently in Ukraine in need of support. UNICEF are working around the clock in Ukraine and at the borders of neighbouring countries, providing access to clean water, healthcare services and other critical support. So far, they have helped 4.6 million people receive health care 4.5 million people access safe drinking water more than 2.3 million children and caregivers get mental health support and over 1.1 million children have engaged with them for education but they can't do this fascinating work without donations if you want to support ukrainian children please visit their website to donate at www.unicef.org.uk forward slash donate. Once again, that is www.unicef.org.uk forward slash donate. The link is also being shown on the screen now. Alternatively, if you live in the United Kingdom, you can support Ukraine by text and it will be split between different charities to get the maximum support. To donate £5, please text Ukraine, that is U-K-R-A-I-N-E, to 70970. Once again, to donate £5, please text Ukraine to 70970. Now, because of the texting service, I have to read the boring legal stuff to you. Your donation is processed and administered by the National Funding Scheme, which is a registered charity under number 1149800. They are operated by Donate and registered with the fundraising regulator. Texts will be charged at your standard network rate. For terms and conditions, please visit www.easydonate.org. <laughs> 